We all have our own idea of our dream home. But the reality is many of us have to put up with houses that just don't work. The kids are living on top of each other. There isn't enough space to do all the things they'd like to do. By the time you've opened this cupboard and this drawer, you can't move and nobody can come in. But it is possible to get more house for less money. Transforming a house into something spectacular might seem unaffordable, but I really believe it is possible to create your dream home for a fraction of the price of going and buying one if you get it right. Oh, wow, that looks really smart. Beautiful. Last year saw a whopping 164,000 home extensions successfully granted planning permission. But get it wrong and a badly designed extension can knock thousands off the value of a house. It's slightly nerve-wracking because this is our house which could crumble at any moment. We might be creating a monster. In this series, I'll be following the fortunes of those attempting to radically overhaul smaller homes for a fraction of the cost of buying a bigger one. The headboard of the bed is going to be this far away from someone else on the loo. <laughs> Too close for comfort. It's never a simple undertaking. That's a mission you set yourself. It is a mission, yeah. yeah. To me, with my bad UCSC maths, yeah. it's four metres. This is going to be a bumpy <laughs> ride, isn't it? I have to brush my teeth in a little small bucket. It's been hell. But the rewards can be immense. Goodness me, how utterly fabulous. I don't really need the rest of the house. It's got everything we need just in this one spot. In many households, changing family needs means that they desperately need more space but may not be able to afford to buy a bigger house. But if you're able to extend, you may be able to get that space without breaking the bank. This week I'm with two families hoping to do exactly that. In St Albans, Hertfordshire, the Tays have scrimped and saved for eight years to give their family the space they crave in their 1930 suburban semi. The architect said, um, when he drew our plans, he said, these side extensions smell of 100,000. We were quite shocked because we really thought it would only be about, about 60. 60. But first, I'm in Swindon in Wiltshire, where tight-knit couple computer engineer Keith and scientist Joe want to almost double the size of their 1930s house, which is stuck firmly in the past. So we bought the house for my father. We're, we're the third generation of Mortimers to live here. I do really want to put our mark on it so it feels like our home rather than his grandparents and his parents' home. The house is full of family memories and has been untouched for decades, but that's all about to change. At the moment, the rooms are a reasonable size, but they're just not laid out very well. They're not interconnecting. They all sort of come off the hallway. So we're hoping that the, the extension will provide a flow around the house. Joe and Keith have strong ties to the home they bought for £350,000. But what would their ideal property in Swindon look like if money were no object? So this, in a perfect world, would be the sort of dream house that, that you'd love to be able to just go out and buy, is that right? Yes. It would be, yeah, yeah. it's lovely. It's very well proportioned, it's a beautiful location and it's really peaceful here. I like the balance of, of the house as well. It sort of seems right, you know, it doesn't seem lopsided or anything. This house is worth about £700,000 and your house would be worth about £350,000. Mm -hmm. How much do you have? £150,000 is, okay. is what we've got available to us. To buy their dream house would cost £700,000. Their house is worth half that, so they'd need to find an extra £350,000, but they only have £150,000 from savings. So you're £200,000 short, so you get the work cut out then. Yes. Just <laughs> <laughs> With such big plans for their £150,000 budget, it's time to check out the potential of their property. This is the house that time has forgotten. It doesn't look as though it's been touched since the 1930s when it was built. When you look at the windows, these are the original windows with the original handles. Now, obviously, they need replacing, 
But this period of house is now bang on in fashion. So if there's secrets inside from when the house was built and bits of detailing, that could be really exciting. There may well be fabulous original features, but the 1930s layout isn't ideal for a 21st century couple. Upstairs, there are two double bedrooms, one single, a box room and a bathroom. Downstairs, leading off the central hallway, is a formal dining room, separate lounge and kitchen. So how does this not work for you, this kitchen? Because this is really kind of isolated from the rest of the house. It's a room on its own. There's no access apart from the one door from the hallway. And so it just feels like if you're in here making anything for anybody or away from the party. The Mortimers have ambitious plans to make their place far bigger with a huge two-storey wraparound extension. To achieve the informal open plan layout they want, Joe and Keith are opening up the lounge and extending into the back garden to create one massive kitchen, diner and living space. The extension will also give them a new study and utility and a larger built-in garage. Traditionally, a house like this would probably have had a family with lots of kids, but because it's just the two of you, then you're going to have enormous amounts of living space. And I think there's a danger that you might end up living in one corner of the house and then heating the rest of the house and looking at it. Food for thought, I hope. While their supersized plans for downstairs give them possibly too much space, upstairs I fear they're just not thinking big enough. They're extending one bedroom in the landing, which is sensible. But they're designed for two dressing rooms plus en suites for their bedroom and the main guest room is perhaps trying to cram too much in. We've only got the, the old family bathroom and the toilet and Joe's parents might come for a week or two at a time and it's really nice for everybody to have their own little, you know, um, washroom and everything. Otherwise, you're, you're wondering, have they finished in the bathroom? I need to go to work, you know, that kind of thing. I was just think for these two bathrooms to be half wardrobe that you walk through and then a small bathroom sort of kind of doesn't make sense to me, but... Mm -hmm. If Joe and Keith ditch the dressing rooms for bigger en suites, I feel they might suit the size of the bedrooms a bit better. I think that Joe and Keith have worked out that supersizing the house is the right thing to do, but as yet, they haven't really found a solution to how those spaces are going to function. And the problem is that if they don't work that out at this stage, in the long run, it could end up really costing them dearly as they camp in one bit of the house and wonder what to do with the rest of it. While the Mortimers size up their large space, I'm off to St Albans in Hertfordshire to meet a family who have been suffering from an acute lack of room. When May and Yuizé bought their £318,000 three-bed semi eight years ago, it was for a family of four. When we first um, looked to buy a house in St Albans, this is the first house we looked at and we ended up buying it. Now, as a family of five and with both parents working from home, it's a very tight squeeze. Everyone's crowded around the dining room table. It would be nice to have a space where we can all be together but not feel crowded. A quick commute from London, picturesque St Albans is one of the most expensive cities in the UK in which to buy a home. Website designer May and business analyst Huey can't afford to upsize to a big enough house here. But we're going to look at the type of place they'd love to own. A five-bed property with an open-plan kitchen diner and a dedicated study. So this house would cost you about £600,000 um, and currently your house is worth about £400,000. Yeah, that's So right. you'd need £200,000 to just go out and buy it. How, how much do you have? We have £100,000. To buy this substantial home, they'd need an extra £200,000. But with all their savings and borrowings, they have just half of that. So you've got about 100, so there's no possibility of buying something like this. No, unfortunately. No. So, so the plan is to try and create it. That's right, yeah. May and Yui need to fit both a growing family and home office in their house, so they're asking a lot of their £100,000 extension. I hope their house has enough potential to achieve it, especially as this isn't the first time they've tried. Four years ago, they converted the loft, but despite spending £40,000 to turn it into a bathroom and bedroom for their two daughters, 
it still wasn't enough. Right now on the first floor is a family bathroom, two bedrooms and a box room which Yui uses for his study. On the ground floor, a sitting room and open plan kitchen diner. As they get bigger, the children, you're finding that there's just not enough space to do everything? That's right. We spend most of our time in this room, um, so that's why we're trying to make this area bigger, um, because at the moment we feel like we're on top of each other in here. The Tse family want to build a two-storey extension to the side and a single-storey extension at the back. Downstairs, they plan to add a small garage, utility room and toilet and create a large open-plan kitchen, diner and living area that opens out onto the garden. What we're hoping to do is to bring the outside in, if you like, in that, you know, we're going to have bifold doors so the outside, the patio, can be used as living space as well when the weather's good. So that will help, I think, to make the, yeah. to make the back room feel a little bit more spacious than it is, even. Integrating the outdoors with your living space can be easy to achieve with floor to ceiling glass. But it really works best if you create a seamless transition between the two with flooring and furniture. So how wide would you like to have bifolding doors? Well, there's a bit of a discussion about this. You yes. would like them... As wide as possible. But personally, I want it to dominate the room. But at the same time, we want it to feel like the outside is part of the inside and be able to use the space out there like that. Upstairs on the first floor, the Tse's plan to make the box room big enough for a bedroom for one of the girls and add a separate study for Yui at the back. The existing loft extension will remain the fourth bedroom. Both Mei and Yui come from large families and they want to give their children something they never had. As we were growing up, we, we never lived in big houses. Both our parents came over from Hong Kong um, back in the 60s and the 70s. And, you know, they came over with, with, came over with not much money and we've always lived in, um, you know, quite, quite small houses. So it's really nice to be able to do this for our own children, um, you know, only one generation on. But yeah. you never had your own I bedroom? I never had never. my own bedroom, no. no. And so it's you, a real luxury. Did you always want your own bedroom? Yes. I would have loved to have my own bedroom. I think the only time when we had a room of our own when we went to university. <laughs> <laughs> Ten-year-old Katie and eight-year-old Lily can't wait to have their own space. Katie's really keen to have her own bedroom because she's very tidy, whereas Lily is very messy. We have this makeshift uh, curtain thing going on oh, here yeah. to I split the it. room up a bit, to give them a little bit of privacy. So you want them to have a bedroom each, and then you both need to be able to work from home. And if, if we can fit in a spare bed somewhere, that would be great. Around a spare room. Yes. And yeah, it doesn't have to be a spare room on its own, because that would be asking for too much. Yes. But if, as long as there, yeah, there is a spare bed somewhere, that would be nice. It's a big ask, but I think there is a way this house could meet all their needs within their £100,000 budget, if they change their layout. They could use all four rooms on the first floor as bedrooms, and move Yui's study into the loft, which could double up as a spare room. The key with that is to be able to flip it around very quickly and be able to have an office that's a proper office, fold it away and then be able to have a, a, a spare room that looks like a spare room so that someone who's staying doesn't feel like they're sleeping in an office. It'd be a good place for an office. The only thing, I guess, is very high up. <laughs> so if there's a doorbell, I have to run downstairs and all that. Good exercise, I guess. May and Yui are trying to do the very best for their children. The key is, though, how to make the space work for them now and into the future. I'm with two households planning to save lots of cash by supersizing their houses for a fraction of the cost of buying new. In St Albans, the Tse family have scrimped and saved for eight years to raise the £100,000 they need to give their family the space they dream of. We've been wanting to do this extension for a very long time. You know, ever since we moved here, we bought this house to extend it. So it's really important that um, we try and get this right, and we're not going to extend it again. This will be it. Over in Swindon, Joe and Keith are spending £150,000 bringing their untouched 1930s house up to date. But in a home full of memories, it's going to be a challenge. Because the whole family has so much uh, uh, history here, I do feel I have to tread a fine line between keeping some of the original features that the family remembers and, and putting our mark on it. Upstairs, they're adding two new dressing rooms and en-suites. 
Downstairs, they're creating a huge open plan kitchen, diner and living space. I've just recently completed a 3D model of the house with this extension. If only building it was as easy. Within days of Joe and Keith celebrating the start of their ambitious project, their builders hit a massive problem. In the 25 years that I've been um, doing groundwork, so I've never come across a, a main sewer that's running basically the whole length of the footing. According to the, the plans we've got, the drain should be halfway down the garden, about eight metres away, so they shouldn't be anywhere near where we wanted to build, uh, where in fact they actually pass straight through where we want to build. It's not feasible to divert the sewer, so the two options are to bring the back wall of the extension in by two metres or push the back wall out beyond the sewer. Not a couple to think small when it comes to their new living space, Joe and Keith take the bold decision to upsize their already huge extension by another metre and a half, adding a whopping £13,000 to their £150,000 budget. Over in St Albans, the Tse family is a fortnight into their 15-week build. To save as much of their £100,000 budget as possible, the family of five are living on site as the builders work around them. I was going a bit crazy, actually. Packing up the kitchen was pretty stressful. Pretty stressful, I was chatting to the kids because they wouldn't get out of my way. Hi. How are you? Following my last visit, they've been rethinking their upstairs layout. Instead of a separate study for Yui on the first floor, they're going to free up that space for an extra bedroom and turn the loft into his office come guest room. I think that's the best use of the loft room. That room is really big, so that makes the best use of that space. We, if we're ending up with five rooms, I think that's the way forward. Otherwise, we'll have to move one of the children out, yeah, of, the, out of their bedrooms yeah. when we have guests. Yes. Um, yeah. OK, so the spare room will be a spare room and an office, yeah. and then you guys will have yeah, space bedroom each down, down here. here. Downstairs, May and Yui are extending out to the side and back. They're creating a large open plan kitchen, diner and living area and want to bring the garden in with bifolding doors, but working out what size they should be has been difficult. Have you decided how big the bifold doors are going to be on the back as well? Four metres. <laughs> we've gone four for the, yeah, yes, the maximum, which is four yeah. metres. Okay. Yeah, we've decided to go for the bigger opening for the door to allow us to use the outside space more. For the garden to double up as extra living space, the Tseys need to integrate the two. There's a perfect place in Elstree, Hertfordshire, to show them how the right flooring indoors and out can do just that. What's really worth remembering here is that the floorboards inside match up with the direction that the floorboards outside go, so that it dr draws your eye out of the house, across the decking and out to the view, which is pretty spectacular as views go, isn't it? <laughs> and the fact that they're at the same level... Yes, I love that. That's a single level. That's really nice. Do you think it would make a difference if it was... I mean, the colours are quite different there. Do you think that's OK? I mean, in a perfect world, I think you would have not only the floorboards going in the same direction, but also they'd actually be the same. And that really means that you have this, this constant flow. The decking continues from the inside to outside and makes this space feel very much part of inside. I would think about these different levels and having incidental seating areas around that, that enable you to make the very most of everything that you've got outside and use it as a, as a, as a sitting room. Mm. I think it's really, it's really interesting to see um, how they've done the decking on top of the, the, uh, the raised borders because that creates a nice seamless feel as well. Um, and that's the kind of idea that we would, we, we would go for, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's really nice, isn't it? It's really useful. What we would have done, maybe, would have, like, different flooring here and different flooring outside, and then it would have been as neat a solution um, um, to get the inside out and outside in. So, yeah, it's been really, that's been really interesting seeing that in, in, in practice. If you'd like more information on bringing the outside in or extending your home, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. Back in Swindon, it's almost nine weeks into the Mortimer's 20-week build. And the walls of their growing extension are up. You can get a real idea of 
how, how big a space this has become. In fact, I sort of stood down the end of the garden the other day thinking, you know, ooh, what have I created? Yes, it's, it's, it's feeling impressive. Keith may be excited about just how massive their house is becoming, but it's important he also sees the danger of that too. So I'm on a mission hoping to bring some perspective back into this project before they create a monster. When you look at the size of the extension, it's, it's completely out of proportion with the rest of the house. And personally, I think the biggest problem they're going to have now is what on earth they do with all that space. Believe it or not, you can have a room that's just too big. You should always measure out each room yourself and work out what furniture you want to put in it at the planning stage. There is a danger, because you were very fond of this house, and there is a possibility that you end up spending £150,000 and, and not really engaging with the space you've got and rather wishing that you could have your old house back and, and the £150,000 back and you, that you hadn't started. Mm. I mean, it, it is bigger than we planned. You know, I'm quite a fair bit bigger now. Can you can you describe to me how all of this space is going to look in terms of its style and and? <laughs> <laughs> that is where we look at each other. Um... No, is that the answer? You can't describe it. To me. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a good idea for Keith and Joe to have a bit of a rethink, as a modern extension on a 1930s house could stick out like a sore thumb. I think unless you have an element of the 1930s in the extension, the spaces will jar. Mm -hmm. and, and I think almost it will make the house and the original period features look a little bit incongruous with, with the extension. This project either will or won't work based on the success of how well you manage to tie the old and new together. Mm -hmm. I agree. A good way to really get working on a vision is to uncover some of the hidden 1930s gems in their house. Perfect. This is an original panel door and it was just covered over mm -hmm. to make it more fashionable in the 50s. OK, so here we go. Moment of truth. Look at that. They're in much That's better condition. That's beautiful. They are, aren't they? So it'll put a lot of character back in the house with all of them like this. I reckon you'll find the old banisters behind the cladding on the stairs. Wow, they're even better than I thought. Oh, wow. lovely. Oh, wow. my goodness. Oh, those are beautiful. Yeah. That's, uh, I, I was not expecting these little details here. This is a really unusual detail, but mm. it just really reinforces how important it is to, to really sing with the features that you have, because those are fantastic. It can be easier than you think to bring a 1930s property back to life by uncovering and restoring its original features. You just need to know where to look. Peel back carpet and underlay to reveal stunning parquet flooring. Check behind boarded up chimney breasts for original fireplaces. And remove plasterboard from ceilings and walls to expose decorative wooden panelling. I'm looking forward to sort of decorating the inside and really making it a home rather than the shell that it is at the moment. Yeah, I must admit, I've been concentrating on how things have been put together, you know, block work and all that kind of make, keeping all that looking uh, great. But yeah, it'd be, it'd be a shift in sort of mindset for me at the end to, to get into that interior mode. Not before time. I really hope Keith and Joe get to grips with their interior design or they're in danger of ending up with a £150,000 modern box tacked onto their 1930s house. I'm with two families hoping to create spectacular living space without breaking the bank. In St Albans, the Tse family was craving more space in the home they've outgrown. We're starting to feel like the kids are living on top of each other. It would be nice to have a space where we can all be together but not feel crowded. But with a month still to go of their 16-week build, the old kitchen diner is being knocked through to their new extension. And the family has had to retreat even further. Yeah, we've got our kitchen, our living room, our dining room all in the front room now. I have to take this upstairs to get it washed. Uh, I think the next couple of weeks is going to be quite hard. 
We just have to pretend that we're on holiday or something when we're camping. That's the spirit, a woman after my own heart. But eventually this house has got to work as a family home with three growing kids and provide a separate office for business analyst Dewey. They're turning the loft into an office come spare bedroom, but are stuck on how to design it. The office isn't very attractive, so it's not nice to have as a spare room, is it, really? You've got all the cables, all the, the printer and the laptop and all the notes and everything, so it would be nice to have something where... It's all covered. Yeah, and... you press a switch and the office is gone. Spins round. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can't make an office turn around, but I can show them how to make one disappear. I'm bringing May, Lily and Yui to a showroom in central London with some nifty furniture solutions. So let me show you this. So here's your desk. OK. Everything's out. And if we just move this chair... OK. ..and you pop it over there, in under 10 seconds, you can leave everything on your desk and you can bring down... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> a double bed. <laughs> What do you think of that? That's great. Maybe I can have a nap when I'm after working a bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You still have to work. Yeah, definitely. That's quite amazing, actually, considering it hasn't taken up much space because that area there is not huge. This is a freestanding unit which you can add shelves onto or not, depending on whether you want to or mm -hmm. not. But you can flip it up and flip it down. And really, with one hand, it's almost completely effortless and then you get your desk back and you can continue working. Do you think that's cool? Yeah. That's not it. So come okay. with me, I've got more. <laughs> so if you want to have an office but you want to keep your monitor out and your desk in place, you can still have an office that also becomes a spare room. Again, really quickly, out wow. comes the double wow. bed. How do, you, how do you feel about that one in comparison to the other one? This one's lower, that one's higher. So our house, depending on where you put it, our ceilings may be not tall enough, so this may be better because it's lower down. Yui tends to work in the day and people obviously sleep in the evening. That room, it, it never needs to be used for both at the same time, so that does work. We can see that working, definitely. Over in Swindon, work on the roof of Joe and Keith's gigantic extension is underway. And inside, the old ceilings are coming down. Spurred on by the discovery of the 1930s doors and banisters, Keith's keen to do whatever he can to bring the original character of the house into the new build. So the builders have reclaimed these bricks from the back of the house. Once they're dry, um, they're ready for the builders to then uh, use on the front elevation where we want to try and uh, keep the building all looking the same. If you're building an extension and want to make sure it doesn't jar with the style of your house, try to mirror key features like bricks, windows and roof tiles. But if you don't have any original bricks of your own to recycle, go for reclaimed instead. If you'd like more information on designing an extension, check out my scrapbook at channel4.com forward slash beanie. With such a mammoth new living area to plan downstairs, it's important that Keith and Joe don't overlook their design issues upstairs. Having two large double bedrooms with cramped dressing rooms and tiny en suites doesn't seem that practical to me. I'm hoping that an augmented reality app will help them visualise what they'll end up with. So this is what you're planning on having at the moment. I just think for a lovely house that you're going to end up with, with this very luxurious space downstairs, there isn't a very luxurious bathroom. If you made it all one space, so you had a wonderful big bathroom, it mm -hmm. could look like this. Oh, mm. wow. That really captures the sort of 1930s look and, and you know, it's so much a bigger space. So would you consider making one big luxurious bathroom rather than having a little tiny dressing room that you have to go through to get to a shower room at the end in one of these rooms? I think one, yeah. possibly. Possibly both, who knows? Hey! <laughs> but understanding scale isn't Joe and Keith's only challenge. They also need to harmonise the 1930s heritage of their house with their ultra-modern extension. The right thing to do with the detailing in this house is to start at the front where you've made lots of attempts to really follow through the original detailing and then to slowly 
dilute it as you get to the back of the house because the big space at the back of the house is going to be very, very difficult to really properly um, make it absolutely marry with the original building. Mm. And you want it to be a slow progression, so really celebrate at the front and then, and then slowly move forward in time. Obviously, I'm moving nearly 100 years and about mm. 10 feet, but, mm. you know. <laughs> Hopefully, they'll now really get thinking about the style of their new spaces as well as the old. It's definitely a good idea to, to decorate the front rooms in more of a 30s style and then gradually bring it back up to, you know, some modern day style for the back. We're not interior designers, but we'll have a go. <laughs> back in St Albans, it took May and you would say eight years to save for the extra space their family were desperate for. And now, after four months of building, their extension is almost finished. At the beginning of this project, the Say family were all living on top of each other. It was quite a challenge to make the house work for all five of their requirements. I'm dying to see if May and Yui have managed to pull it off. Before, this three-bed semi felt cramped and claustrophobic. Now the side extension has turned it into a bright and fabulous family home. At the back, the garden was plain and uninspiring. Now they've gained a glorious, colourful outside living room that feels like an extension of the house. The kitchen diner, ideally the heart of any home, was becoming too crowded for everyone to be happily in the same space at the same time. Now nah, look at that. Now they have a stunning, spacious, open-plan living area big enough for the whole family to enjoy being together. How is, does this compare to how you're expecting it to be? Yeah, it just, it just feels more, you know, so much more spacious. Don't feel like, yeah, we're on top of each other, which is great. You've actually only extended the house by a metre at the back, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. It's interesting because you haven't actually made it that much bigger, but reorganising the space has meant that it's a complete transformation. Yeah, we didn't want to do a huge extension because the, you know, the garden's not that big and, you know, we didn't want to cast too much um, shade onto the neighbours. Because we could have gone out three metres, but, yeah, just over a metre. But actually, it just goes to show how small changes can make a huge difference if you do them right. Yeah. Helping create the illusion of even more space are the floor-to-ceiling glass doors leading onto the decking and into the garden. Now, I know the decking was really important to you, wasn't it? And you decided to go for this decking in the end. Yeah. Yes, because yeah. you showed us a whole load of um, decking. We went for this um, recycled plastic uh, wood fibre composite. And it feels really nice underfoot, actually. So if you're coming out without shoes, it doesn't feel cold or dirty necessarily. Um, so that helps to, you know, make the room sort of extend the room, the inside room outside. I think the fact that you ran the boards in the same direction as the boards inside yeah. does give that sense of drawing the eye inside and drawing the eye outside. It makes it feel longer. The redesigned garden is zoned for dining, relaxing and playing. And the low walls provide plenty of seating. I think it's really successful. I think um, this is going to be a really nice garden to hang out in. Yeah. And it does look great, I've got to be honest. It looks fantastic. Before, Yui ran his office from the tiny box room on the first floor and the two girls shared a bedroom up in the loft. Now the loft has become a large and light study for Yui, which is easily spacious enough to double as a guest room. Ah, oh, this is great. Every child's dream! And that's freed up an extra room that May and Yui have turned into a funky mezzanine bedroom for Katie. It's amazing because she sleeps down here and plays up there, you know, chills out up there. And you never had bedrooms, either of you, as children, did you? No, we never had our own bedrooms when we were, yeah, when we were young, so this is really nice for them. They've got their own space. It is magic, I have to say. This is, this is, well, any of my children would dream of this bedroom. It's great. I know, it is a, a favourite room in the house. For eight years, the Tseis have been living on top of each other in a home that was also a workplace, until they had enough savings to create this dream home. But have they managed to build it for a fraction of the cost of moving to a new house of the same size in their area? When you set out, um, I know that you were doing this because you wanted it to work well for you, but 
you know, how much of an eye did you have on the value of it? We didn't really think about the, the value of the house, you know, how much money we put in and how much money we got out of it. Um, but you, know, you always look out for these things. You know, if you do move on, then the value does count. At the beginning, the house was worth about 400,000, wasn't it? And you were going to spend 100,000 doing it, but you ended up spending a bit more than that, didn't you? Yes, a bit more, about 10, 10K more. So, so you ended up spending about 110? Yeah, yes, roughly, yes. 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 I mean, the garden was the, was the extra expense that we didn't really cater for, uh, because we thought, OK, done the house, next year we'll do the garden. But then we suddenly realised that we've lost our side access. So in a year's time, we'll be traipsing mud through the house. Mm. So we thought, we best do it now. Their dream house was worth £600,000, and it would have cost them 200000 to move to it. But they've managed to end up with exactly the house they needed for only £110,000. That's an impressive saving of £90,000. And there's more reassuring news. Looking at what you've done here, I think it would be quite reasonable to expect you to be able to get 650000 if you came to sell it, which would mean there's £140,000 of equity that you've created. That's really good. Created. Yes. Is that, yes. Is that OK, then? Yes, that's right now. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's all, brilliant. All worth the effort. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely worth the effort. Yes. Yeah. The more equity we, we can have in the, in the house, the better it is. And I guess also that money will be put towards the kids' houses when they will buy their property, so be the, their deposit. So it's, it's nice to have that extra bit of money in the house. So have you now got your dream house? It really works for us and, you know, we love it, the kids love it, our friends and family all really love it and they just, you know, can't wait to come round. So it's, it's yeah, it's perfect. There were times when it felt like May and Yui were asking the impossible from their house. But actually, it's not a very big extension. With really clever reorganisation of the space, they've managed to give each member of the family the space they really need to make the house work for all of them. Coming up, the Mortimers prove that big is beautiful. And it is huge, mm -hmm. but it is fantastic. there's only a month to go of the Mortimer's six-month transformation of their period family house. Modernising a home lived in and loved by three generations of one family has been a massive challenge, but now the new 21st century extension is finally connected to the original house. Knocking through this wall has been such a big turning point for us because it's really becoming our house now rather than the previous generations. It's clearly a milestone for Jo, who can now put her stamp on the interior. But it's vital she and Keith tie the old and new together, combining the 1930s style with modern day living. I just hope they can pull it off. For inspiration, I've brought them to this stunning Art Deco apartment in London. This is a living, breathing home, mm. and, and it has a charm about it, which is really exciting. Here, Joe and Keith can see how to celebrate the best of their 1930s heritage. Oh, well, this is very deco, isn't it, with the black and the white and the tiles? The house is just full-on 1930s, and it is amazing, you know, what, what, what's been created there. And it, it's, it's good to see one end of the spectrum, and then we've kind of got to blend it from maybe there through to something modern. It's been a challenging six months for computer programmer Keith and scientist Joe, but at last the build and their interior makeover is almost finished. When I first met Keith and Joe, they were planning on breathing new life into their big 1930s house and extending it even further. What they really struggled with, though, is how to marry the old and new and what to do with all that space. Really looking forward to seeing how it all turned out. The couple's home, untouched for decades, felt like a museum piece. Now it's a smart and stylish abode that's in tune with its past. Hi, hello, how are you? Lovely to see you. Hello. 
Since buying the family home for £350,000 nearly two years ago, Joe and Keith have been stuck in the past with an outdated layout and clumpy 70s decor. This is our dining room. Oh, that's great! Before their dining room was a dumping ground for Keith's computers. Now it's been transformed into a gorgeous space oozing with 1930s glamour and sophistication. I think it's a real luxury having a separate dining room, but a really nice one, isn't it? And, and there's lots of elements of tradition in here as well. You've got a lot of bits and pieces which are from the house when you took it over, aren't they? This table, mm -hmm. is, the table is original, and the sideboard. sideboard and chairs, yeah. So actually, there's a lot of this that's just been reused from mm. what was here. Ultimate recycling. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just recycled pieces of furniture that recapture the period feel. The restored original doors are a great success too. So we had a look at a couple of the doors and stripped them down and depending on where they were in the house some had were painted, some had been varnished so uh, we decided just to play it safe and, and give them a nice white coat of paint. Back to its former glory. Indeed. Brilliant. I'm impressed by how well Keith and Joe have stayed true to the 1930s inspired design. But have they carried on the vintage look upstairs? Previously, the guest room, like the rest of the house, felt tired and outdated. Now, it's a harmonious palette of light shades and warm woods. This is lovely, this room. You've got all the furniture that you collected together of your grandfather's and put it all back in here, and then little extra nods to the 1930s here and there. It almost feels like it belongs in the house and it looked nice. So, you know, we're just giving it a good setting now. So you've got a lovely big bathroom, but no dressing room. No. No. We took your advice. You know, we, we saw <laughs> Very that. Very obedient. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, the room's big enough. You don't need a dressing room. So uh, it was a nice bit of luxury to give it a lot more space to the ensuite. You know. Keith, you've got a lot of memories and history with the house, but mm. I guess so you, you wanted to respect that, but but make it your home. Mm. And do you feel that you've managed to do that? Yes, I feel that we've really put our stamp on it now and you know, decorated it, but with my influence as well. And, you know, I feel like, you know, it's our house to enjoy and really looking forward to making my own happy memories here. Keith and Joe have made some wise style choices with the rooms at the front, but their biggest challenge has always been the vast extension at the back. And it is huge, mm -hmm. but it is fantastic. The outdated layout meant that when Joe was in the kitchen, she felt isolated from the rest of the house. Extending out into the garden has created an open-plan kitchen, diner and living space suited to modern-day living and entertaining. But even with furniture in place, there's no escaping. It's a gigantic space for two people. There was a point where I slightly felt you were thinking, ooh, we don't know what to do with it all. It's not quite right yet. We're still sort of bumping into things and thinking, well, you know, just move that out of the way as I walk through and things like that. So, a little take, bit of that. It takes a while to get used to a space like this. You're slowly feeling the way with yeah. it. Yeah, definitely. I was a little concerned that the modern extension could end up at odds with the rest of the interior. I think the visit to the flat, the 30s flat that we went to was, you know, really sort of gave us some inspiration. Also showed us how much there could be and how full on it could be. But equally, it's sort of given, given us some inspiration and, uh, you know, we've uh, tried, tried to do what we can. This project has been a really personal quest for Joe and Keith, but I think their perseverance has paid off. So have they got what they wanted for the cost of moving into a ready-made home of the same size? When you started this project, the house was worth about 350,000, wasn't it? And you were initially going to spend 150,000 pounds on it. How much did you end up spending, do you think? It, it was around the 200,000. The majority of that got eaten up by having to make the extension even bigger. Okay, so that process did chomp into mm -hmm. another 50,000, which mm -hmm. is quite a painful overspend. How, how did you manage to find that money? Well, we have a, an offset mortgage, and that allowed us to effectively make our mortgage bigger uh, by drawing on the equity on the, in the house. 
their dream place was worth £700,000 and it would have cost them £350,000 to move to it. But now Joe and Keith have managed to create their own ideal home for £200,000. And although they overspent by 50000 that's still a saving of £150,000. So you ended up spending 200000 so a total of £550,000 on the house. I think it's really realistic that you have made the money that you spent back, um, whilst you haven't necessarily made a paper profit, I don't think. If we haven't made a loss, then I'm happy. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I think that's what you set out to do. You're here for the long haul and, you know, your equity is secure in the house and it's a perfectly reasonable investment. You know, I, and what a lovely home to be able to enjoy. Um, with, what more would you wish for? I don't think I could ask for anything more. It's beautiful. Keith and Joe have breathed new life into this time capsule from the past. I still think they're feeling their way around the space, but I think that over the coming months, they're really going to come to grips with their new home and thoroughly enjoy living in it. Next time, a tiny budget means a big compromise for Jason and Sarah. There's things that you want, there's things that I want, but at the same time, I think, we well, don't have the money to do it. I'll find the money. Help. And for first-time project manager Claire, there's a lot at stake. It's slightly nerve-wracking because this is our house which could crumble at any moment. <laughs> <laughs>